All right guys, today we got a science experiment going on. All right, so uh, with today's agriculture, you're gonna find yourself mixing uh, several different chemicals together to uh, achieve a certain uh, function. Um, some herbicides are designed for grasses, some herbicides are designed for broad leaves. Um, you can get maybe uh, better herbicides that uh, are kind of an all-in-one, um, but it's better, like you say, you've heard people talk about modes of action. Uh, you're better off having a couple different chemicals um, to control weeds. So. What we're going to do today, just to uh, for the sake of this video, um, I know it, it's not going to give me any problems, but uh, if anybody has any questions whatsoever about mixing different chemicals together, um, and if they'll mix properly in your tank, um, you can perform what is called the jar test. Now, some of you guys may already know what the jar test is. This is going to be old, uh, old news for you. Um, you've probably done it already. Uh, and you probably know better than even I do as far as uh, how it's done. But for the guys that don't know anything about the jar test, uh, guys that have been talking about maybe wanting to get in the spring, um, I think it's going to be a real good uh, example of making sure on a smaller scale that you're not going to have issues in your sprayer. So let's get into this. All right, so what are you gonna need to perform the jar test? Well, of course you're gonna need a jar. This is an old uh, mason jar. It's the old blue style with the zinc lid on it. Uh, <laughs> and it does leak a little bit, so we gotta wear our gloves when we're handling these herbicides. Um, Roundup is safe. I've had Roundup on my hands all the time. Um, it's uh, not something that concerns me, I'll put it that way. 2,4-D is a little bit rougher to get on your skin if it absorbs through the skin. 2,4-D, and this is actually uh, called LV4 solventless. It's another version of 2,4-D. I just put these labels on here and this is Credit 41 Extra. Um, basically it's a generic roundup. So we got a generic roundup. We've got a uh, generic 2,4-D. This jug is your surfactant. The label keeps falling off here. But it's basically just the uh, spreader sticker stuff you've heard. It's the stuff that goes on that makes the uh, herbicide stick to leaves. It won't uh, go on the leaf and run off. It's basically something that makes your herbicide sticky. So you get good coverage and the leaves have to absorb that uh, herbicide. And I'm going to throw in a dry product. Um, just for the sake of this experiment, we have Status from BASF. Status, I can't say enough about. Status is, to me, is gold. Um, status in corn. Um, Post-emerge is my go-to, and I hope it keeps working because I have had wonderful results with status. Um, it's basically, uh, it, it's a, a blend of a few different herbicides, but it has uh, some dicamba in it. Um, and I didn't, with all this dicamba uh, stuff in the news and all this dicamba drift and all this uh, problems people have been having, and we're not immune to it, it happened in this valley uh, with uh, dicamba drift, I sprayed status right next to uh, my... Um, contour strip of beans. Uh, basically the corn and beans were right side by side and status must have a, a, a I should say a, a less potent version of dicamba maybe um, but I had no cupping of the leaves. I had no problems there. Uh, it, a lot of it maybe had to do with the time of day I sprayed um, and uh, wind conditions all that kind of stuff but I really hope they don't uh, try to outlaw dicamba because it is an ingredient in other herbicides as well not just for the bean uh, fiasco that you've been hearing on the news um, it does transfer to other herbicides and status is one of them and if they take status away from me um, I'm really going to be disappointed because uh, this works so well in uh, post-emerge corn so it is a dry product, like I said, it's a granules, there's granules in there. So basically what we're trying to achieve here is to see if you can mix chemicals together and have it mix without it uh, becoming uh, sticky or like a paste. Um, many guys have heard stories uh, with 2,4-D and liquid nitrogen. Um, I've never done it, but I've had four or five guys already tell me that they have done it and it has made a big mess. Uh, the order... Uh, uh, which uh, you mix those two products together, you can uh, gum up your sprayer in a hurry. So, um, we've got ourselves some water. So that'll be the first step here. 
I guess we don't need to overproduce this video. We're just going to get right into it. So this is water from the well. This is the exact same water that I use um, uh, to fill the sprayer. Same well. So we're going to put the water in the jar. And I don't want to quite fill the jar. You just want it maybe three-quarter full, maybe a little under. All right. So usually on all the labels, on all your sprayers, it's basically going to tell you to uh, fill your sprayer half full of water or uh, three-quarter full of water. Usually it's half. So that's... Basically, the first thing you're going to do is put water in your sprayer. So now we've got this jar now becomes our spray tank. So if anything is going to go wrong, if we're going to have any separation or any type of issues, we're going to see it on a small scale and uh, not uh, totally destroy our sprayer in the process. So I'm just going to go through the order in which I mix my chemicals. Um, some guys may do it a little differently. Um, this would be an example of... What I would put on the corn um, post-emerge. Uh, this would be the, the, the plan that I use uh, post-emerge. So I know it works. I've done it last year and I didn't have any issues. But <clears throat> I want to make this video and uh, show you guys kind of what the jar test is and what uh, they're talking about. So um, let's get into it. Let me get a glove on at least here and uh, start uh, adding some uh, components here. All right, so we've got the lids off here for ease of demonstration. I'm only going to do this one-handed. I've got my chemical glove on here, so we should be okay. All right, now as far as measuring the amount to put in, I'm not going to really overthink this or get so uh, in-depth with this that uh, we're going to just bore everybody to death. Basically, I'm just going to add a little bit of each, um, depending on the rate that you're going to use in your sprayer. Um, corn uh, post-emerge. Um, trying to think how much roundup I'm gonna use. I don't know yet, I have to figure out the rate. So um, we're gonna start with the uh, Credit 41 Extra. Like I say, it's a generic uh, roundup. It's uh, glyphosate, it's 41% uh, gly glyphosate. Um, your roundup power max and all the name brand products is gonna be a little higher in the 50 percentile, but it's okay. Um, I'm not using this on its own, so I get away with 41%. And price-wise, it's a little bit cheaper, group nine herbicide. So let's add a little bit of uh, Roundup here. And like I say, we're just going to eyeball it. Um, we're going to have way more herbicide than the amount of water. All right, just a little bit. Okay, so now we've got water and we've got Roundup. So we have it in our tank and our tank is agitating. We added our Roundup. <clears throat> the next one I'm going to move on to is the... LV4 solventless. It's a white milky version of 2,4-D. Um, that'll be the next one. And again, I haven't figured out what rates I want to use. So we're just going to add a little bit of 2,4-D. And probably the amount of 2,4-D will be very similar to the Roundup. That's probably way more than I need. But if it's going to not mix, um, this will be where it's not going to mix. Okay. So, uh, next we're going to mix our granulated product, our status uh, from BASF. Um, now, usually dry granulated products, what I try to do is mix them in a five gallon bucket of water and add some and mix it up and then add it to the sprayer so that way it's good and mixed. Uh, you do run the risk with dry products just dumping them in the sprayer of them not mixing and basically getting caught in all of your screens and you won't get a uniform mix. So I try my best to mix it uh, outside of the sprayer. So let's just add a little bit of these granules and it doesn't take much. Your rate on your status is gonna be a lot less than your Roundup or your 2,4-D. So this should turn it brown. We get a little bit here. That's plenty, that's probably more than I need. Again, it's probably all more than I need. All right, so just observing this, um, both the 2,4-D and the uh, status have basically settled at the bottom and you can kind of see it's kind of foggy where the the roundup is still mixing with the water uh, all the chemicals are mixing right now <laughs> and of course we don't have any smoke we don't have any uh, fire so um, I know that these products are safe to mix together um, and finally we're going to finish this experiment with the surfactant now the surfactant is at such a low rate compared to your herbicide this you're only going to use one quart per 100 gallons of water. So I want to try to add this, but I don't want to add a lot of it because we're just going to be using it at a low rate. And this jug's kind of full. Let me stand up here. And that's plenty. 
All right, so we've got everything mixed, um, just like we're gonna mix in the sprayer when we hit the field uh, to do the corn. So we're gonna put our lid on here. And this lid does leak a little bit. It's not a, a sealed tight jar um, with these old zinc lids here. And hopefully zinc doesn't react with anything. We might have some problems here, but uh, <laughs> all right. Um, let me uh, turn the camera off. I'm gonna shake this up and mix it together. And I'm basically going to simulate uh, the agitation in your sprayer. You wanna mix it, swirl it around, shake it up, get it nice and uh, mixed, and we'll see what it looks like uh, after it's all mixed up. I do wanna shut the camera off because I wanna put both gloves on. Cause like I say, my jar leaks a little bit. So I'll show you the finished result uh, when I get back here with you. All right, we're back here. Uh, so, okay, I've been uh, shaking this jug up and mixing it for, I'd say, a good five minutes. And like I say, that is to simulate uh, the agitation in your uh, sprayer tank. Um, kind of looks like a glass of milk, maybe a little bit brown milk. Um, so, and that's the, uh, the LV4 is a white milky. It turns it white and then the status will turn it brown. Um, so it's uh, mixed up here and after five minutes uh, what I'm seeing is I still see you probably can't see it on camera but I do still see some evidence of the uh, status the dry granules um, that haven't dissolved yet now that could be I don't have enough water to dissolve it um, but that's kind of why I like to uh, mix it in a bucket first before I go and put it in the sprayer. Um, just because uh, <laughs> this is kind of why. It takes a while till that dissolves. Um, so I want to touch on a few other subjects here. Um, I know guys uh, can add many different other uh, products to their sprayer, and this would kind of uh, work with that too. Uh, they do have a water treatment uh, product. If your water is uh, hard or soft, depending on what water you're using, um, it can affect your herbicide. I do understand all that. I don't use it here. I haven't had a problem with it. Um, also, a lot of guys would use uh, liquid nitrogen or nitan as a carrier instead of water, um, and they might even uh, water down uh, your uh, nitrogen, um, depending on what you're doing or what you're spraying. I don't have any liquid nitrogen here. And as a matter of fact, what I wanna do is I'm gonna redo this experiment in a couple days here. We're gonna revisit this subject and I'm gonna show you what the negative impacts are of uh, mixing things in the wrong order. We are going to put the uh, nitrogen in here and we're gonna do the 2,4-D nitrogen mix in the wrong order. And I wanna show you what it turns it to. Uh, hopefully it'll work here in, on a small scale. Um, and I'll show you the negative effects of what can happen to your sprayer uh, if things aren't added in the right sequence or the right order. Um, so we have that. Uh, so looking at this, um, it is foamy, it is really thick. And again, I don't have enough water in here um, compared to the amount of herbicide that I have put in. But we're gonna let this sit. I'm just gonna keep the lid on, well, maybe I'll crack the lid so it can get air. Um, I don't want it airtight because your sprayer's not gonna be airtight, at least mine isn't. So I'll crack the lid, I'll let the air get to it, and I will come back with you guys uh, this afternoon. All right, guys, we're back. It's early afternoon here. This uh, mixture has been sitting for uh, quite a while now, a couple hours, and we're gonna revisit this and see how we did. All right, so just looking at it, it looks to be about the same consistency as when I mixed it. And I know it's hard to see on camera, but just uh, sloshing it around here, I'm not seeing any of the uh, granules from the status, uh, the granulated uh, herbicide. So, um, this here mixture uh, should work. 